time for some more experimental typography. So for anyone unfamiliar with what I do here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these three typographic designs. I'm going to take it through some kind of process or you know, do something to it to manipulate it. And then we're going to take that manipulation and make a design out of it. And specifically today, what we're going to be using is glass. So I have three glass objects that I'm going to use as a filter to run through my camera. So whenever I take a picture, hopefully we'll get some kind of distortion or just some something interesting. As the name of the video suggests, this is all an experiment, so I have no idea what's going to happen or what the outcome will be. So we're just going to have to kind of see what happens when we do it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've got my piece of paper here that has my typography on it. Um, I chose this size just because I wanted to keep it smaller, just because the glass objects that I have aren't that big. So I didn't want to have them so big to where it wouldn't really fit. So I thought the size would be good. But if I need to make it bigger or smaller, I can always make that change. Also, since I have you mounted up here and I can't really change that angle, I have my second camera that I can take pictures of in case I see a perspective that you are not able to see. So hopefully I can still bring you along and show you everything that's going on, even from my perspective. On top of that, I have four glass objects that we're going to be using. And that will be this, 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 and this. So like I said before, my goal is to just kind of take this and then hopefully just kind of bend the perspective and see if we can get something interesting. So I guess while I have this out, we'll start here and we'll see what happens. It's like, this is interesting how it kind of distorts at the end here. Like that's kind of what I was kind of talking about where you can get some interesting, I think kind of what's causing uh, is the thickness of the glass because it's bent. So it's causing the light to kind of bend in some really weird kind of ways. But that's kind of what we're going for, isn't it? Like something like that could be kind of interesting. That's cool. It's almost like it kind of cuts it in half and then it like replicates it right here. It's kind of like you're getting double the same thing. So that's interesting. All right, so I just went through and I used this in a bunch of different ways, just kind of twisting and turning it just using some different angles from the camera. I'm just gonna show you some of the shots that I got just so you can kind of see what I was doing and see kind of some of the things that I liked. Um, probably what I'll end up doing is just kind of doing the same thing with all of the um, pieces of glass, just trying to see if I can just get a bunch of different options and then just kind of go through the options and see what we like. But so far we've at least kind of discovered that you can still get some really cool, interesting distortions by using, you know, just some glass glassware just like this. Actually, I haven't even used it in this orientation, so because that's another thing I got to try out. So I'm also discovering that depending on like how you hold it up can also change because if you if I set this down, this doesn't look, you know, distorted at all. But if I start lifting it up, it starts bending the light in a different way. So even something as simple as that can change the way that the typography will look. We can hold this in almost or any orientation and then, you know, turn it any way and then, you know, get some kind of variation, which is cool, but kind of a lot. So anyways, I think I'm at least OK so far with this one. So let's move on to something different and see what we get. So this is the one that I think is probably going to turn out the worst one because it has, um, you know, like these measurements on the side so that might not look great but also just I don't really know like the best way in order to shoot through this in order to get something interesting. But we're going to try and see what happens because you never know. Sometimes the things you think won't work are the things that do. Like that's interesting. It kind of bends it upwards, kind of like with the rim. I don't think it's quite as good as the other ones that we have, but you do get some distortion if you flip it up around but it's kind of hard to get it in like just the right perspective where you get enough distortion that it actually looks like it's being distorted. It's not just kind of hazy or something. If this one doesn't work, we still got two others to play with. That first one was really good. 
So we'll just keep it going and we'll see what else we can come up with. All right, so for this one, I'm pretty sure we can get some interesting distortions. I just don't know if it's gonna be um, very unique. I do still wanna try and just see if there's something that we can get, because you never know. You could try some like half on, half off. I think that's probably where mm, the best bits are gonna come it's from the edge. So we can bend the light. I feel like otherwise the light's just really gonna pass right through the glass and it's not gonna make a difference. So we're really just looking for places in which the light will bend against. So this one might be a little bit of a bust. So in this one, it's interesting because it looks like we have one of the um, kind of where it's bending the light. It looks like it's kind of bending it up this way, almost as if it's following the cylinder, the cylinder. But then you have another one and that's kind of just going straight. So that's kind of interesting. It's almost like it's splitting it into two different, um, two different versions of it, which is interesting. But I think that might be kind of the best that we're going to get. So we'll call it there for this one and we'll move on to the last one and see what we get. So this is the one I pulled out last minute. Cause I know I said in the intro three, this is the fourth one that I saw and I was like, maybe we'll get something interesting. I figured, hey, we're here. Might as well give it a shot and see what happens. Although kind of going off of what we've already discovered with how the, how the light will interact with everything. Although this is interesting, I don't know how well you can kind of see whenever you kind of move it over, you get a lot of different distortions. Um, you can even kind of see it here where it's like the light is bending it. So you're having all the letters kind of, at least in this area that are like kind of bending and being compressed, which is cool. I don't know if it will be useful for what we're doing here. I feel like maybe this, you know, this kind of effect would be really cool if we had one big word or something where it's really thick that way we could really distort the lettering and we don't have to worry about like legibility i think that would be a cool use for something like this but i in this instance i don't think it's that great let me um get my camera out and see kind of what this can look like yeah this version right here is an absolute mess but it's interesting so you know i don't know Oh, you get some interesting um, distortions here on the edge because it's sitting up and we have like the thickness of the glass because it's curved. You get some interesting distortions here. Okay, well, I think I at least have enough photographs on here that will be useful. Um, I'll kind of do a quick um, slideshow just to kind of show you guys photographs that I had. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take like a day or so just to kind of decide which ones that I want to use. And then from there, what I'll do is I'll take one of those, um, one of those, uh, you know, distortions, um, and then I'll create a design using it. And then we'll see how it comes out. So see you guys in a bit. All right, so I got a little bit of ahead of myself and I actually started kind of putting some stuff together, but I didn't get very far before I started recording. Really, I was just trying to kind of clean up a lot of the images and just try to arrange them, just get some kind of idea going. So you didn't really miss much, but I just wanted to clarify that I did get a little bit of ahead of myself. But once I had the images that I was considering using kind of cleaned up and in a usable state, I could really start exploring what I thought would work with typography. So at this point in the process, my focus is really just trying to come up with a composition that I like, something that feels interesting and that kind of highlights the typography while still kind of pushing the boundaries. With typography like this, that's kind of wild and a little bit more unrefined. It can be a little bit hard to come up with ideas just because just because the typography isn't set up how you're used to. But I feel like that's what makes it fun to kind of explore. And then whenever you do finally find that idea, it's really exciting because it is uh, a little bit different than what you would normally do. And it's pushing you to think in different ways that you would normally. But once I had some compositions in mind, or at least kind of in a rough state, I wanted to start bringing in some of the photography and seeing if I can make some of that work and see if maybe it's a, you know, a mixture of get a rough composition, bring in some photography, and then kind of figure out where the blend of the two is so that way I get something that's interesting. All 
All right, so everything that I did so far was done yesterday, but I've encountered a little bit of a problem. The more that I was working on the poster design, the more I felt like I was missing something. Every time that I tried to use a photograph, I felt like it just wasn't quite what I wanted or what I was thinking in my head. And so I just wanted to kind of pause and then just reevaluate them in the morning. So before I get back to the designs, there's two things that I wanted to do. Number one is look for some inspiration because I feel like I have a certain idea in my head that I want to accomplish. And I feel like I've seen, you know, some similar ideas before, but I can't quite put my head on it exactly what it is that I'm looking for. So I'm hoping if I can find some good inspiration or some reference images, I might be able to kind of uh, figure out exactly what I need and then just get what I need instead of kind of throwing whatever I can at it. Now, the second thing that I wanted to do revolves around what's inside this box. So what's in this box is three glass objects. We have a triangle, a sphere, and a cube. Essentially, these are used for photography. You can hold them up to the lens and it will kind of distort and bend the image, kind of exactly what we're doing with this experiment. So one of my thoughts was that the images that I'm using are just normal photography, which is fine, but I feel like kind of with the experiment that we're doing, it would not only make more sense, but it would look better if the images themselves were distorted using some glass. So I wanna try taking some of my own photography that I might be able to use in the designs using these glass objects. Also just a fun fact that I wanted to mention is I was going to do this video about a year ago using these objects, but whenever I did some kind of preliminary tests, I didn't think that the results were very interesting since the objects are all kind of uniform so you don't really get a whole lot of interesting um, artifacts or bending or manipulations it's all pretty straightforward so i decided not to use these and not do this video but whenever i was thinking of solutions to my problem i remembered these and i thought this might be a great way to include them in the video even if they were not the um, main event so anyways like i said what i'm going to do is i'm going to look for some inspiration take my own photography and then we'll get back into editing and hopefully have something uh, good at the end. So get back to it. All right, so since I did that video, I did some research, I took some photos, and so I felt like I was ready to jump back in. Now, between the two recordings that I did, I did do a couple of small tweaks, but really that was just kind of trying out some different photography, nothing uh, too crazy that you wouldn't have seen before. But honestly, taking a break was great for me just because it allowed me just to kind of step away from the project, gain a different perspective, that way I could come back with some new and fresh ideas rather than just kind of rehashing the same thing. And I feel like that's what happened to me. I was just kind of stuck in the same headspace, so I wasn't able to kind of think in a different way that would lead me to a different solution. I think that's what I needed the most. But I feel like once I had one poster where I liked it and I was happy with the outcome and it was looking how I had in my head, I feel like I finally kind of understood what I was looking for and I was able to kind of finish the rest of the posters and kind of make them the way that I kind of thought about in my head. But of course, I'm always trying to explore things and try some different things out. So I don't want to just kind of copy and paste the same idea. So I'm still trying to explore different um, ideas and concepts and techniques that I might want to try out in the different posters. So that way each poster is unique. And I'm also trying to explore some different ideas. Specifically, one of the things that I found out that I was really looking for in this project was this like really um, contrasted and blown out photography. I don't know why specifically, but I feel like that was like the missing thing in my head where that's what I needed. And I didn't know that I needed that until I just kind of stumbled upon it. And then I was like, ah, oh, that's the thing that was in my head. That's what I was picturing. And that's what this project needed. And I feel like once that clicked in my head, I was able to come up with a bunch of different ideas that I were a lot closer to what I had in mind. So really it was just kind of taking that feeling and that emotion that that kind of photography gave me and then just exploring it and seeing what else I could come up with with a different type of graphic compositions. And then after that, I was just trying to kind of nail in all the details for all the posters and just make sure they're exactly how I want them to be. where we ended up. I feel like the last few episodes that I've done in this series, I didn't really come out with something that I was really happy with. I made something and I thought it was all right, but I wasn't really content with the end result. But with these, I'm really happy with how they came out and I just had a lot of fun doing it. There were so many pleasant surprises while doing this project. 
And I just found it a lot of fun to just kind of explore what these objects can do and how it can manipulate the type. And honestly, it's kind of made me think, you know, what else could I do with a bunch of different glassware? I feel like I could get a bunch of uh, other glassware that isn't what I already used, and I'd be able to get a lot of different looking outcomes. And I think that's really exciting. You know, maybe at some point in the future, I'll come back to this idea, but with a couple of different objects and maybe we'll get completely different results, which I think is really exciting and fun. But overall with these poster designs, I'm really happy with how they came out. They're interesting, they're grungy, they're pushing the boundaries of what is legible and what is illegible. And overall, I just think that they're fun and interesting to look at. And along with the typography, I also got to include a little bit of my photography. And while I don't consider myself a photographer, it is kind of fun to try out different things and see it play out. And that's why I keep doing this video series is because whenever I try something new, sometimes the results aren't great, but sometimes they're just fantastic. And it's so much fun to do, as well as getting to push myself and explore things that maybe I wouldn't have normally. But with all that out of the way, I'd love to hear what you guys thought. Did I do a good job? Did I not do a good job? Should I try this again with some other glass objects? Let me know in the comments. And of course, as always, if you found this video helpful or entertaining in any way, I'd appreciate it if you would check out the rest of my channel and then consider subscribing. I hope to see you in the next video. Interesting. Think interesting. 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 Interesting.